In this lesson we will build a tornado. Don't expect a fancy Hollywood style tornado, this is all about how to accomplish things uh, technically. So visual quality and eye candy is uh, really for a completely different tutorial. You see here I have five primitives that I created prior to recording and they're really small. In this scene you can see this if I create a standard cube and uh, compared to that they are really small. The reason for it is we will use it as a rubble for our tornado. Now I have to create once again a skeleton for that tornado and don't uh, take the word skeleton as something usual. I really find it to be appropriate for certain setups. In this case my skeleton will become a helix spline and uh, I will change some settings here. So first I will change the orientation to X, Z. I will just zoom off a bit. So first thing is the start radius. It should be much smaller. Let's try 50 or even lower. Let's try maybe 20, maybe even 10. Let's see how that works. And uh, one thing that I should mention, I do rehearse these setups just a little bit but I really don't remember all the necessary values so I really have to be guided by intuition. Now I will also cut this end radius down because I think it is uh, too thick. So let's try 100 and uh, that would be pretty much the size ratio I'm looking for. Now this end angle will define how long this guy is so how many segments it will have. So let's try something really high, like maybe 4000. And uh, this looks solid, but uh, we could go even a bit further. So 5000. And uh, I think this will work pretty well. Now, when we have a skeleton for our tornado, we can put this rubble on it. So this primitive. So I will create a cloner, of course, in the object mode. And I will drop all these guys under the cloner. So the object which we will clone onto will be this helix spline. Of course we will change some settings here. So let's try maybe 100, maybe even more. Let's try 200. And I will enable this smooth rotation and turn off this per segment because I want to use a random mode. Then it will use a random distribution of these guys over the surface of this helix spline. Now let's make those guys move. I will enter a certain rate, which is actually speed of movement for these guys. Let's try 10 and hit play. And uh, this is really fast. Let's try five. And uh, this is far more acceptable, but uh, I would rather want these guys to go clockwise. So I'll check this uh, reverse here and uh, that is what will happen. I think this is a much more natural motion. Let me stop this, go back. And in its current state, it's not really something interesting. So let's uh, take a look how we can make this a little bit more interesting. So I will create a random effector. And the reason for it is uh, I want to use a scaling value. So I will scale each clone randomly. Let's try first with one, so double the size. Maybe even more, let's try two. And uh, some things are left too small, so let's go with three. So initially all guys will have a visually acceptable size. So now the clones will randomly be scaled three times their size. To bring this to life, I'll add a color mode and, uh, and set the blending mode to maybe add. Maybe this color scheme will be a little bit uh, better. So let's hit play and see what do we have. We now have a really, really nice effect of uh, these guys spinning. We stop this, go back. And uh, even though this looks uh, really interesting, I think uh, we could make it even a little bit uh, more better. So the advantage as with any MoGraph tool is that things tend to stay parametric. So for example, I will pause this. You see this uh, 
just hit play until certain capsule comes in so for example this guy if i want to reorient it i can do so even after so let's say z plus and you can see those pills reorienting and this setup stays fully functional so how about that you can play with any value here you like so for example you can change the blending mode but what i wanted to show you is uh, i wanted to change this a little bit so now i have the ability to move this guy but uh, how about bending the actual tornado so it looks a little bit more realistic so let's do just that let's add that secondary control to our objects and uh, for this i can create a linear spline so let's say something like this it doesn't have to be ultra precise i will subdivide it and uh, maybe i will hide the complete setup along with this helix spline so i can see what i'm doing i will select all points i will subdivide it once maybe even twice and we'll change the type to something more smooth let's say maybe this akima spline i hope i pronounced this correctly and uh, i can unhide these guys and uh, to utilize this spline we have to tell this helix guy really to obey the movement of these uh, points on that spline you can do that easily by creating a spline wrap so you can wrap a spline on another spline so that is also out of the box thinking and uh, of course let me hit play now and uh, you will see what happened now this setting here this axis will be much more easier to understand so basically i oriented the complete helix according to this setting so let's go to y plus and in this case that would be minus and the reason for it is i'll just refresh this go back and the reason for it is this uh, setup here so if i uncheck this reverse i will get the correct results let me stop this go back now if i press play once again you'll see that these guys are going counterclockwise if you once again hit this reverse guy and hit play it will go clockwise this can be a little bit difficult because we click this guy a few times but uh, actually there is a slight internal issue in this uh, spline wrap at least i suspect that is the problem and uh, once the whole thing refreshes it really works as expected now since our spline is loaded here we can access the spline points and since that helix spline is wrapped onto it watch what happens it will obey the movement you can have some sort of a flipping happening and uh, we will fix that the very first thing i would suggest for fixing this guy this flipping that can occur let me undo that press play to refresh go back is to change these intermediate points to natural i don't know why but it simply works the best another thing is uh, you see you have the flipping still but uh, combine that with this option here under spline it's the very last setting in the spline wrap there is an up vector control that really controls where your spline points will be looking at figuratively speaking so in this case if i set this up vector to one that may not mean uh, much to you but uh, the result will be that this guy will no longer flip so we can press play you can see that works really interactively we can disable the cloner so maybe access the points more easily and you see it is a really non-destructible so maybe select these points enable cloner and you can use this setup we stop this it's uh, kind of distracting and uh, as i was saying you can use this kind of setups for all your 
vortex effects, uh, wind tunnels, black holes uh, and stuff like that. So let your imagination go. This is one really cool thing. Everything stays per metric so you can change the values here. Maybe play with the offset or maybe put these clones just on the part of the spline so you can get a different effects some ribbon effects and uh, stuff like that let me stop this go back and uh, i hope you enjoyed this one let's go to our next project